Right lads, welcome to the East India Company. We are today going to be trying to uh, do a little bit of reverse colonialism. As you know, uh, as you can see in this timeline, uh, Britain, through us as a company, uh, dominates India. And I think that it's time we visited the home islands. To do this, we're going to need to break free, sort ourselves out in military and economy and navy and everything else, uh, and then see if we can't dominate the British Isles. We also have some journal entries. We've got overt mutiny, so we need to consolidate colonial rule and reform the Indies. Uh, so otherwise, you know, we'll have well, mutiny. So to do that, we need to have separatism below 30 for a total of 10 years. And then we need to own seven of these territories. The territories I'm going to go for are these two. Or, you know, uh, yeah, Punjab, Kashmir. And then if I take a bunch of Burmese territory and then this uh, Himalayas one up here, that should be enough to avert the mutiny. First things first, though. Let me... Expel the English diplomats and then harm relations because we need to be under 20 relations in order to break free. Now we're going to start off with a lot of insufficient taxation capacity and a lot of issues with access to the market. So I think we need to basically rush railways as far as we can. Having said that, maybe going down the military route because we're conquering lots of stuff. We do start with decent technology, which is nice. Actually, central archives, we can get taxation capacity. Get that first. Now, I want to focus on a resource-based economy for the simple fact that we're currently part of the English market or the British market, which means that right now it will say, oh, you know, we have plenty of grain, and we, which we are going to do because we're India anyway, but well, there's a deficit of this kind of stuff, right? Uh, when we break free, obviously, we'll have our own market, and so I don't want to be playing into the British market when we're not going to have those resources available to us, if that makes sense. So logging camps, iron mines, and coal mines are going to be the order of the day. And we're going to try and get a steel industry going early. All right, now I think I want to deck on Britain immediately. Let's see what we can do here. Where's independence? All right. Now, it's important to note that all of our little Indians uh, will be helping us out. To the point where they're uncertain. If I can get the French involved, that make life a lot easier. We'll offer them humiliation of Britain. Now, the Russians have also joined us. And so they're fearful, so they're most likely, hopefully, going to back down. Oh, the Prussians have joined. Oh, they've just, they just backed down. That's rather anticlimactic. Well, we're still the East India Company, but I suppose we're just an independent company now. Uh, and as you can see here, a couple of our buildings are now suffering from shortages for the simple fact that we are no longer part of the British market. So why are we this color? Okay, so we're suffering coal. Or we need to complete some important stuff. Uh, hardwood. I'm going to trade with the Qing as far as I can, because then we don't need to use any convoys for that. Uh, tools. Man of wars. Uh, some paper, that's very important for our taxation. Silk we can get from the Qing. Should be that sort of stuff sorted. And we can focus on building up our economy. I do think the play first is to build up here. Okay, looks like the Qing are fighting the Brits. I'm going to lean towards the British and hope that they offer me something. Yeah, I think the play here is to let separatism stay below 30 for 10 years and then conquer. So that'll give us, what, 10 years, 9 years to conquer a bunch of territory? I reckon we can do that. Ah, right. So this forbidden Greece. What is this? This is uh, a, a nice little bit of history here where basically the British, uh, well, colonial rule uh, gave these cartridges, right? And you have to tear them open with your teeth. Unfortunately, these things were made with both pig and beef fat. I think it's necessary to point out that at this point, India is populated by mostly Hindus and Muslims. And by mostly, I mean ex almost exclusively, both of whom have an issue with respectively pig and beef. So, you know, we're definitely going to be taking a bit more lenient of an attitude, probably listening to the locals, considering we are now, well, we're now locals ourselves, led by the great <laughs> Ebenezer Bulwa Lytton. <laughs> of course, you're a traditionalist. We actually have some good laws. Oh, that's another thing. So I need to reform the Indies as well to avert mutiny. So I need the GDP to grow by 50%. I can do that easy. I need to have something other than land-based taxation. I need to ban slavery and I need to not have serfdom in act. Okay, escaping fugitives. We are going to pay for their capture to try and get the landowners on side. And then as part of the government, we're going to bring the rural folk in. And under laws, serfdom, they're going to oppose it, but they're not going to rebel. So let's go for serfdom abolish first. Oh, the Brits are in Beijing. Well, half of Beijing. It does make the Qing kind of weak, so I'm not too opposed to that. All right, there's the increased taxation capacity, which we're going to use now. Go over to our urban centers. My government administration and standardized filing system technically is going to cost us a lot. But that is going to help us a lot more than you think. Now, whilst we do have 123 million people, a lot of those people are sort of, uh, they are subsistent farmers, right? So we don't really get too much economic benefit from them. Now, I want to start getting the steel industry going. So let's 
as soon as possible. So let's build 10 of those, even though they're going to technically not be worth anything. I'm going to start building down here. Now I'm losing a lot of money, technically, you might think, because it's minus 40,000. But it's minus 40,000 taking away from 3.2 million uh, GDP in terms of, so not GDP, sorry, uh, gold reserve. So we should be absolutely fine, at least for a while. Do I don't have any rice fields. I don't, I don't think I have any, what? No. I don't have any wheat or rice farms. Interesting, okay. All right, serfdom's not been abolished, unfortunately. So we need to switch out to another law. Can't ban slavery because we need the trade unions to be there. We can shift over to agrarianism though, which will help a lot. Okay, time to build some more construction centers. My plan is to gamble, right? So we're gonna be building a lot of construction centers early in order to skyrocket our GDP so we can get monopoly on things like steel and then export it to the world, drop the price and make sure that we are the only ones doing it. Oh, okay, nice. Immediately with agrarianism, wonderful. So we can go for per capita taxation now. Looks like the Qing had their war and they, uh, they well, they lost it. Thing is, they lost the opium wars, but they've still banned opium. <laughs> How does that work? Whilst having a widespread opium addiction. God, you'd be so easy to conquer. You'd be so easy to conquer. Hmm. Oh, let's put capital taxation immediately. Wonderful. That should help our revenue side of things. It means our bureaucracy is low, so we do need to start worrying about that a little bit. Get some government administration going. Here, 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 here. Yeah. It's worth noting that we are Anglican, as in we're Protestant, right? Um, so it's kind of weird. <laughs> I could get private schools going. No one really disliked that, so I might as well, right? The government's quite flexible, so if I get the industrialists in, kick out the armed forces, and then go over here and go straight to private schools, that will help us immeasurably. How many flotillas do you have? 150. We have 30. We need to quintuple. Jesus Christ. Quintuple our, our navy to contend with the British. If you want me to enact serfdom and abolish, dude, I, I, I want to do that. Okay, I'll give private schools one more shot on this 5%. Ah, we will become more loyalists, sure. That means all I do is cancel this, put you over here. And let's try and enact Septum Abolished. So, okay, so people in South Bengal are trying to convert people to Christianity. Yeah, we're not, we're not trying to do that. <laughs> Very multicultural society. I'm not going to sit here and try and convert the entirety of India. That would take a long time if you use four cells. Oh, we're actually at the rank number four great power. With the number two GDP. The GDP bigger than France. Oh, yeah. Which is actually impressive because France's GDP skyrockets. All right, how are we doing on this front? Revolution. See, now I would be concerned about this. Um, if it wasn't for one tiny little thing that I'll show you. Um, if I'm thinking about this correctly, and I might not be, in which case this would be a very short video indeed, all of my vassals should come on my side, right, in this war, in this revolution. So that means an absolute ton of front lines. So it doesn't matter that this guy has like 200 uh, or 150 or however many um, units. He can't be everywhere. Because he can't be everywhere, doesn't matter because we're just going to clown him. We just have to defend our capital, wherever that is. Is it Delhi? Is it Bengal? Where's our capital? Capital say over here. So we just got to defend our capital. This is an experienced offensive plan. That is actually huge. Right, our economy is going to take a hit for a while. All right, now all of our little vassals should just nip in <laughs> and rinse them. All this territory is going to be occupied. Come on, boys, bit faster, lads. This is honestly disgusting. Look at this screen. All right, push out of here, please. And despite the fact that we are completely outnumbered, uh, you know, us personally, that is, because of the sheer quantity, look at that, of, uh, of little fronts, they can't be everywhere. And so we win, meaning that we can, we have a 100% chance to enact serfdom abolished. And we also reset our debt, which is nice. <laughs> so yeah, our economy takes a hit uh, for a little while, for sure. But honestly, that's fine. There's railways that we need desperately. There we go. We've abolished serfdom. And furthermore... If we go into our government and we bring in maybe the intelligentsia to do it, we can ban slavery. <laughs> so we can rush through all the laws that we need to rush through. <laughs> right, let's get some more construction centers going. We actually apparently have a state that isn't incorporated. We haven't incorporated city on. Okay, seems strange. All right, we do have to make sure our military is up to snuff. Um, but all this stuff initially is not too useful. Let's go over to... Well, well, we'll do the military side of things when we're ready, when our economy is sort of up and running. Low legitimacy means these things take ages to pass. Guess we're doing it again, boys. Here we go. Number two. Don't understand how you have the ability to do this, considering it just keeps your ass in a war. That'd be why our bureaucracy is so low. Ah, he came through and screwed up all of my, um, all this stuff. Well, that's annoying. That'll be why... Yeah, government administration. There we go. We suddenly have a load of this stuff. Okay. That was annoying. That's why our GDP dropped. So we can actually get steel tools now. So we need to start working on that. Doesn't look like his revolution's getting off of it. Oh my god, he's gonna... <laughs> nice, excellent. Now, all of those people are free, which is good. So, colonial rule, we need to start moving. 
We need to start actually conquering territory. Okay. Reform the Indies. We just need to improve the GDP. Improving the GDP is kind of easy with conquest. So let's go to development. Let's make sure we got all the latest tech. And let's go to all the Sikhs. Probably damage relations with them first. Okay, I might have left it a bit too late to conquer everything. Now I was too focused on the laws and economy. Yeah, our GDP has now been overtaken, I assume, by the French. Yeah, they've got about 20 million on us. The Brits are about to take over as well. Okay, we don't need all these government administrations. I don't know what the, what the hell I was thinking. Okay, uh, we have a lot of fertilizer. That's nice. I need that. Why did I want fertilizer again? I can't remember why I needed it. Um, we're going to suffer a lot if we don't have like full ports because we're going to have low market access. So let's get that going. There's a long way to railways. There's that. And then market wise, we have a lot of grain. It was this. Yeah, we wanted steel to make tools, didn't we? Um, so before we make steel, we need coal and iron because that's what makes steel. It's a lot of iron. It's a lot of coal and then go with steel. That should do it. And in the meantime, let's give our arms industry something to do by attacking. Where are you? Diplomatic plays, conquer state, Punjab. Burma might side with the enemy. That would be quite useful, actually. Because we've got some offensive guys, so we should be fine. Our little vassals should help out. All right, we need to conquer Kashmir as well. Is Pashatan part of it? Yes, it is. Okay, let's do that. Pashatan. Panush I can't pronounce that. I'm so sorry. There you go. Oh, someone else got involved. Yep, Burma did get involved. Okay. Our offense is much better than our defense. I want to say having a decent army is so important. We start with good tech, which really helps in this region. All right, let's conquer state. We can get it all done here. Um, Punjab, yes, 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 yes. Kachin, Shan states, Burma. I think it is just Burma. Okay, cool. So let's do that. Uh, add war goal, conquer state, Burma. Add war goal, conquer state, Kachin. Okay, that's all we can do for now. That's not going to help our infamy, but sure. We're lacking in paper by a lot. From the Qing and the French, and then we also need to consider setting up our own paper mills. Now, hopefully, no one else gets involved. Hopefully. All right, boys, here we go. Let's crack on with it. Let's see this first battle from Sir Henry Havelock. We have better offense, but not all of our troops are in the battle there. Same thing over here. But this is what. Okay, well, they had 42 in the in the battle, and uh, we did not. Yeah, they had 50. Eventually, we'll get a battle that's favorable. We've got to keep going. Alternatively, we could split into multiple different fronts, and our vassals could do the vassal swarm thing. That's always fun. <laughs> Yep, they're just rinsing him. Nice. They've actually pushed in a little bit. It's a bit annoying. We're actually getting pushed back here, but my uh, my Indian vassals seem to be doing God's work. Yep, they're pushing over to the capital. Or on this side, we are pushing as well. I don't understand this one. 25 to 21. At the same amount, our offense is quadruple his. So, uh, oh, my, why didn't we win this battle? Damn, not, 10 offense versus 9 defense. Nice, boys. All right, we need to start getting some military research going. Munition plants. Yes, please. Do you have any shortages? Lots of low market access. Expensive military goods. Yeah, we'll sort that out. So, yep, there we go. Sikh Empire has been conquered. Need to go ahead and... Oh, we've already incorporated that in Punjab. Nice. Because it's part of the state we already had. So that's going to take 28 years for those two. Which also means that I can send Sir Henry Godwin around the back. Go on, Henry. Henry! <laughs> I don't get it. Why? Why are only four of two of you in the battle? Okay, right. It's been enforced. Excellent. Corporate state. Incorporate state. Okay. So we have eight years left and we need another two provinces. I think this counts as one. They're all part of the... Yeah, look. Uh, the Himalayas. That's one. We can go after them. And then I'm going to need mm, the Sin count. I like the look of Sin. To be fair, we only have eight years to uh, increase our GDP by quite a bit. Uh, Sin does count. Excellent. We make money occasionally whilst having 108 construction. <laughs> Do you want to go to universal suffrage? I think getting the voting in would be real useful. I'm just going to force it through. If you don't like it, then just vote against it in future. Oh, we're playing this one again, huh? Okay. Just don't screw up my buildings this time, yeah? Please. I wonder what's going to happen here. Why are the Ching <laughs> leaning against me? Don't do not do this. There you go. Good good boy, Ching. All right, railways. Yes, exactly what we need. All right, I do want to put up token resistance where I can. All right, rinse them, boys. <laughs> this is such a stupid strategy. Look at that. That can't be an intended feature. This can't be it. Like, surely someone played it in India and tested revolutions, right? You're just immune to revolutions. Look, there's no way this was intended. Oh my god. I can just force through whatever laws I like at any point. If anyone gets upset at me, I just remove them from power. I, I don't know. Maybe you should have something like your, your vassals break free or, or they all get like bumped up one. Like if you're a vassal, then you become a dominion. Uh, to take advantage of the anarchy or something. Because this is honestly like, why would the Indian princes just dominate India for me? I suppose that's kind of, <laughs> it's kind of the English circle like 1700s. <laughs> 
but still. All right, here we go. Rather quick revolution that. There we go. Wonderful. Now we screwed up all my buildings again. So I need to go back in, structure center, do that one, market squares and gas street lights. And then for here, standardized fire system. There you go. And like I said, our cold results go up. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Revolution's just good for me. I right, get a bunch of steel mills going. And then, in fact, we're going to kickstart this by going steel tools. And then we're just going to have a massive tooling economy. Why is the intelligentsia against universal suffrage? That's, that's sort of another thing. So the intelligentsia are very much in favor of universal suffrage. Yet I get an event that means that I have to choose between their approval rating or enactment chance on the actual thing itself. It doesn't make sense. Surely it would be the opposite. We're like pushing it through harder would make them happier. Real low market access over here. You have a full port? Yeah, you do. Um, let's not build in you then until I get railways, which hopefully is soon. Right, reforming the Indies. Wonderful. So that means our GDP actually improved. So the economy of the Indies has been transformed under our diligent rule. With slavery and feudalism abolished, our vast territories are ripe for exploitation through private enterprises. Famines, uprisings, and epidemics have been a staple of life under East India Company rule, but we are resolved to change that. We've liberated the peasants from their quotas so that they are not forced to hand over the meager handfuls of rice they need to feed their families. By replacing these harsh regulations with private employment, we ensure the wealth will trickle down to the locals. Uh, more qualifications or investment pool? I think we need more qualifications because we're really lacking in those right now. Universal suffrage. Oh, we can just get it. Okay, let's, well, let's just get it. Nice. I'll take that. All right, path of liberalism, which means we get... Radical ideologies, because that sounds fun. We're about to break the 100 million mark on our GDP. Always good to see. All right, so we're getting steel, then tools. We're going to need some motor industries for the railways that we're going to build. I appreciate this sounds a bit backwards, but with Victoria 3, you have the most success in this game when you plan your economy forwards, right? Instead of being reactionary. So you can definitely play reactionary. I'm pretty sure the AI plays a little bit reactionary, apart from France. So you can sit there and go, okay, right, I need... Uh, tools. So you build a bunch of tools. Okay, now I need iron. So you build a bunch of iron. Now I need um, clothes. So you build a bunch of clothes, which is fine. But I know for a fact that I'm going to use tools in everything. I know that if I use steel tools, I can produce more of them. So I need a steel base first. So if I create all that stuff, instead of going backwards and stalling it, I sort of move forwards. The Radical Party wins, apparently, with the rural folk at its head. Which gives us plus 20% infrastructure. It's actually ridiculously useful. Uh, also, anytime I want to make money, uh, if I go too much into debt, I just do this. Either I switch out to wooden buildings or I just do this. And suddenly I'm making a ton of cash. Oh, three years. I completely forgot to do this. That would have been bad. All right. So we need to conquer Sindh and a couple more. Um, and like, well, let's conquer Sindh first. Mm, actually, I can't want to conquer the rest of you. 52. Yeah, June. Let's go after this lot. Well, you know what? Let's go after Nepal. Surely they'll just back down, right? There are one province minor. I think they just did it if you saw that. All right, rinse and repeat, boys. You want to liberate Kashmir and Nepal? Yeah, no, I don't think you will. All right, and the final one over here in the Himalayas, the weakest one, I imagine. And he's gone. Excellent. So let's incorporate this state. It's another one. So now we only need two, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so one or two. Uh, let's unify our lands and attack Burma. When's the truce? Oh, the truce is already done. Nice. Shan states. We go over here. We add in state begu now i can't imagine that people are gonna like me very much yeah we're notorious which actually gives us a lot of issues from conquest but that's fine oh the french are getting involved interesting right well we have railways now oh the french being involved is actually kind of an issue interesting all right i don't think there's a, well we can't add anything else all right nip in oh the french had land here okay i probably should have asked for that land all right before the french turn up over here please can we win this with much much better troops oh the other indians have turned up on mass could rinse them before the French turn up. That'd be amazing. Uh, let's advance this southern front as well. There's no one here to stop us. Just march straight through Henry Godwin, please. We've got two Henrys. I didn't even realize that. Go straight through the south. Okay. The French are going to turn up here. We should have capitulated them before then. If we can win this battle. Come on, boys. Excellent. Okay, the French turn up, but there we go. That's the that's the victory. All right, France, you don't want a white piece because you have uh, invested. We'll just wait then. It's fine. All right, consolidate. Ooh. Consolidate colonial rule. A great Indian subcontinent has been brought under East India Company. Rule those foolish princes who opposed have either bent the knee or perished. Colonial rule is held together by the collaboration of the, of the company and the Indian princes. Over the decades, we've seduced the Indians with promises of wealth and prestige of military ranks and noble titles. The service has been rewarded and for winning their favor, and by winning their favor, the subcontinent is pacified. So either everyone likes us a bit more, which is a bit useless, or company men. Sounds good to me. 
Our convoys are likely being raided. And there are separatists in our country. I actually need these guys to rise up before this war ends. Otherwise, the French might join. Not any more railways here. Uh, okay, well, we've got an engine issue. Let's sort out that first. Let's only watch what's going on. Now we have to kick the hell out of them again. Not an issue. Everyone's leaning towards the Shan. It's annoying. Right, it's just us, right? Yep, excellent. Let's nip in and crush it. Does that lose me my bureaucracy? I hope not. It does. Yeah, this was a very ill thought out uprising, I'm not gonna lie to you. Also, I think if someone's fully occupied, it should automatically make them capitulate. There we go. And there we go. They're gone. <laughs> Finally. actually making money whilst having construction of 200 and 300. That's, that's insane. Uh, GDP was still number three. Uh, behind the French, we're just about to take out the Qing. Oh, come on. A couple more buildings getting done. Yep, we're, we're number two, boys. All right, let's start the preparation for the invasion. For that, we need clothes. It's very cold in comparison. Right now in Durham, it's about, uh, what, four degrees outside? Which right, means we need to declare an interest in England because we need to form England. Uh, I'm also going to declare some interest in America because usually you can buy guns from America. Uh, let's go to South America as well. Or Brazil. Just so I can export to those markets. A very similar flag you got going on there, Chief. Got electricity. And repeaters. Handcraft machine guns. As you can see, I'm really heavily investing in our military research. I've uh, I put a lot of points into, or a little, at least, a lot of uh, construction in uh, universities. Loads of universities. To try and in increase our innovation. And as you can see, it's kind of paying off. Fully staffed, 50,000 employment. All of whom trying to generate enough innovation to take us screaming into the British Isles. In fact, our GDP is actually skyrocketing. We're going to catch the French. We're like 20 mil behind. That literacy really did help. I think a treaty port is in order. All right, let's give this a shot. So they're confident, but they don't realize that our troops are just a lot better than theirs. Now, we also do need generals, to be fair. Maybe that's why they're confident. Oh my god. Expert defensive strategies, which gives us another plus 30% defense, as well as plus 20% offense. I think I'm in love. Benjamin Bertie, take a bow. Let's promote him up to level four, so we can command 75. Honestly, he could probably do it himself. Cat, I'm about to fight a war. This is not the time. I don't know why it's showing off of two fronts here. Is it this one? That's a weird place to put the front. It is on this one. Interesting. How do the Austrians get involved? They are. Okay, I can fight the Austrians. That's not an issue. The thing is, I, I want to take Tibet, but I can only liberate them. I don't want to liberate them. Transfer subject. Yeah, look, there's no... I can only do the other stuff. Hmm. In the meantime, I think we're lacking in grain, yeah. So, let's get some rice farms going, I suppose. All right, boys, crack on. Predictably, we smash through the Qing defenders. And right, things are progressing rather nicely. We've killed 400,000 troops. Quite a large cost of war, but that's to be expected. We sort of uh, forewent our opportunity to become the number one global power um, by GDP. But I think it's worth it for this treaty port. Plus I wanted to flex the muscles a little bit. Machine gun and ironclads unlocked. This is a good day for the military. And we might go, I might go straight for trench warfare. It's gonna take us five years, but that'll put us ahead of the English. Mm, our convoys are being raided. The sheer quantity of troops we're fighting. There's 1,500 battalions here. We've got about, oh, I think our other general died. So we've got about 75 troops on the front line. <laughs> it's working for us. I wondered why the numbers were suddenly very much not in our favor. Austria left. That should make life a lot easier. They just got bored. There was nothing to enforce on them. Out of 1.23 million dead in battle. Versus our 700,000. I mean, yeah, our vassals. But we lot, we killed 1.2 million. Jesus. That's why you don't overstack. Like, that's all due to attrition. If I show you this. 1.2 million is from attrition. 75,000 is from battle. There's no point chucking men on the fronts. Uh, we need an admiral. One in South India. One in North India. Then we get a general. So you know where this is going. In South India. God, they both suck. Okay. Take your troops. They will invade Beijing. Because our ships are a lot better than theirs. My logic is if, the, if all of them are pushing over here and they have to have every single one. Because realistically, Qing has a lot of troops, right? Damn, okay, no, they haven't called up any garrisons. And there we go. We've got ourselves a treaty port. Which gives us access to the Qing market, which means silk. Oh man, this is one of my favorite events. Basically, it's a kid that served six different whalers and brought them all home safe and sound. It's amazing. And this new character appears. We've got Adam Jones. He's a naval commander. Let's go. He's better than Martin Colehurst, who's just pious. To be fair, this guy's an expert convoy raider and an expert naval commander. So absolutely, that's wonderful. Rondell Muir Campbell. Are you part of the North India? 
Yeah, okay, we need to focus all of our... We're gonna build our navy around this guy. Okay, I'm building a bunch of electricity so we can upgrade our... I swear, we'll get to Britain when we get there, okay? But we need wood first to build our flotillas. Flotillas, however you want to pronounce it. Electric sawmills, steam donkeys, rail transportation. All right, we need to switch out from peasant ladies now. Oh, we've become number two great power. Yeah, no one really wants a professional army, but I do. They don't really mobilize anything, so we can force that through. University should help push this trench works through. Because we can't just land in the UK, boys. 221 battalions they got. And a good amount of them as well. They are infamous. So people are less likely to attack them. Or side with them, sorry. Even more likely to attack them. These graphs are weird, man. Most of the time we're making money. Um, as you can see from our income. This whole temporary national revenue thing. Sometimes they just have money and they just give me it. Oh, number three, great power now. Austria is number two. Wow. I'm assuming that's from your army. Are we not? Are we an empire? We're a principality. We don't even count as an empire. Okay, well, we'll see about that. Yeah, they've got 400 battalions. Prussia's got 179. 400 battalions is a lot. I've got the back end set up for us anyway. Secure shores means commerce. Quantity over quality. Nah. Safer shores. Doctrine of iron and steam. Metal skinned hulls. Yeah, we just instantly went from like wooden hulls instantly into, into just straight to ironclads. Armored line of battle. Plus 20% naval offense. I like that. I'm gonna try and smash through the British Navy. I've never actually played the naval game before, so what do you need? to perform better. You need ironclads. What makes an ironclad? Can I make ironclads? What makes ironclads? It's gonna be a shipyard, right? South Bengal has three. Shipyard, here, wait, here we go. Steamships. Military shipbuilding, here we go. Man of Wars. So we need steamships or arc welded ships. Okay, so if I do steamships, then I can switch out to, yeah, there we go. Producing those. That requires coal. There you go, that'll do it. We need a lot of coal. We make 230,000 whilst having a construction queue. Oh, 350. I mean, now it's only down negative 15. Well, how the hell do you have a higher GDP than me? You're 40 million ahead of the Ching. All right, all of the infrastructure is set up, I think. It's finally time. Let's get some naval bases going. All right, we are going to need opium for our boys. Like I said, attrition is the main thing, and we've just upgraded our military to uh, shrapnel infantry as well as trench infantry. Well, shrapnel, sorry. Shrapnel artillery and trench infantry. Our navy is damn near the best in the world. We don't use conscripts, now we have a professional army, so we need to worry about conscription center. And naval bases are on their way. As well as that, I want barracks need to be in northern India. Why is it out of 100? Plus 100 from, prof oh yeah, prof plus 100 from professional army. I don't know why I was thinking like it was should have been max five. Now, oh, did the British have? Some sort of espionage in this game would be great, because right now I can just sort of look in. Uh, they got skirmish infantry, they don't have trench. 78 offense, 84 defense. Dude, but they have their patriotic fervor, fervor from their armed forces. That's horrifying. We're also probably gonna have a more domestic, uh, set up domestic market than we do. How good are our boys? Oh, 80 offense, 103 defense. 80 offense. We might, especially with our generals, or at least this guy, we might be able to pull it off. Bear in mind we get a huge, if we have a, a supported naval landing, we don't get the malices. But if our naval landing is botched, then we have huge malices. Let's have a look. 84 defense. Yeah, he might be able to do it. If they don't have a defensive guy, we might be able to do it. If we were to invade London. They have a, a, an arms industry and a munition plant, though. Doesn't seem to be faring too well. George, can we see you? You don't have any bonuses to your stuff, but you have 84. Uh, let's promote you to the max. Just because then you can hold, I think, 100, yeah. Still 20 million behind the French GDP. That is just, look at that. That is disgusting. All right, those are shipyards being finished. I also have another plan which is, I want to export, okay, well, first I need tools. I want to export um, ironclads to the British and like arms and that sort of stuff, all to the British. And then when war, they'll, they'll rely on my stuff and then when war breaks out, they don't get any more. Improve fertilizers, that'll help quite a bit with our wheat farms because we have a lot of fertilizer because of all those uh, chemical plants. This is probably the best nation I've ever geared up for war, to be honest. Right, the issue is that we're currently not making it attractive to become a serviceman so what i'm going to do is this so that's going to hurt us a little bit in terms of wages only about like a couple of thousand but what that should do is bring in a lot more people to these barracks because suddenly the wages will be a lot better hmm. more offices how do we get offices all right do we have 156 battalions now the brits are in persia what's our uh flotillas 45 how many of the brits have it's okay we need to a lot, have a lot more than this although having said that how is our navy better than his i have invested heavily have a look. Naval base. 51 and 20. <laughs> He's still using man of wars. <laughs> 51 and 20 versus ours of 63 and 63. 
They should be fully supplied. Jonakel gives him another 10. Right, let's do that. Yes, ignore difficult landing penalty. Oh, please. Oh my god, that would help so much. Then we just need to sneak through the troops. Okay, so let's still get our navy as good as it can be. Our players with not enough qualifications, but I'm just going to still build them there anyway. And then let's focus on our GDP a little bit. What are steamers used for? Port, fishing walls, and whaling station. Okay, do we... Could I do something with my ports, maybe? Industrial ports? You consume a lot more steamers. Do that. Plus 25 taxation capacity. Oh my god. Right, let's promote this guy to the max. So you can command 20 of 72. And you are in the North India HQ, which is in those regions. So I've built a bunch over here, which I think can't be used now. Like over here. I think I built, yeah, like 10 naval bases, which are kind of useless. Um, let's downsize you then. Build a bunch over here. It's a similar issue. To be honest, I'm tempted just to go for it the second we get this ignore landing penalty thing. Because I'm pretty sure our ships will land. Like, we'll beat them in, in a naval battle. Just for that simple fact that their naval bases, firstly, are poorly supplied with mana wars. And also, we have, you know, they've got 21 defense. And we have 60 and 60. And our, our guys are fully supplied as well. Well, this is a nation that is really ready for war. 60 and 60, yeah. Imagine not having iron clans. So they're still using the basic mana wars. <laughs> Oh, man, they haven't upgraded at all. A bit strange, if you ask me, but sure. All right, GDP is still lagging behind the French. The French have now stretched the gap to 30 million. By the way, for context, we've pulled away, like, what, 40 million away from Qing and, like, 130, 20 million away from Britain. But the French is really, like, rapidly pulling away. All right, munition plants are profitable. Yeah, you will... Once we start running out of ships, trust me, you will definitely be profitable. Our munition plants are also mildly profitable. Again, let's keep this price low. We're going to need it. And our arms industries, yeah, again, decently profitable. So you are North India. Okay, we could probably build another 30. To be fair, I don't think it's, it's not an issue with battalion, is it? Number of barracks. It's an issue with actually having the people. Opium's expensive. We need more opium. Uh, is there anything I can do with opium? I think it's just a case of just building it. Get the Chinese hooked on it. I already did that video. That was a lot of fun playing as If you haven't seen it, I played as Afghanistan. Got my market share on um, opium. And then just got everyone in the world addicted to opium. A lot of fun. There we go. Torpedo boats. No. I, at some point, I just got to go for it, right? Siege artillery. I'll right, we'll go for that next. I think it's time. We've got rivalry with everyone. He's got protectorates, but he doesn't have any allies. No one would see this coming. All right, Benjamin Bertie. Time for you to go home, chief. So the lot can patrol the coast. <laughs> oh, the French would go involved. I can offer Sierra Leone treaty port. I'll do that. French are on our side. I can offer to humiliate Great Britain. Prussians have joined against us. That's fine. Because we'll use the French and Russians to counter them. So what do I need to form England? I need home counties, Lancashire, Westlands, Midlands, East Anglia. West County, home counties, East Anglia, Midlands, Yorkshire, Lancashire. Okay, so they're basically just... What? Why am I asking what you need to form England? Like, you, live, you live in this bloody nation. You know what England is. It was trench warfare, what, 40 years early? Let's go. <laughs> uh, conquer state, home counties, the West County. That'll be everything. He is uncertain. We have a lot to win here. No, you're, you're not allowed to fight each other. I'm not promoting this guy. He's not great. Um, Actually, he's got 20% defensive. I forgot. Ching! <laughs> You're actually going to force me to mobilize, aren't you? All right, well, defensive strategist or not, promote him. Defend against the Ching. The French are traveling to defend over here. The Prussians to attack. All right, there's one in Indochina. Trench rat. I love that. All right, Terence. Do your duty. Defend the treaty port. This is turning into a bit of a world war, boys. Prussia forces France to grant independence to Prussia. What the hell do you mean? You had Prussia? What does that mean? What, what, so you're in this war for independence, but they don't... You're not... What? You don't... You don't... What? Okay, well, let's ignore that. Get your head in the game. They're just trying to throw you off. 18 flotillas in reserve. Which one's the South Indian one? You are. Got damn torpedo boats. The zip boys, the game is running incredibly slowly. They don't they don't seem like they're gonna back down. Here we go. Right. First things first. I think we have to get what do we even want to get the get Beijing out of this war? Oh my god, our defense is 118. There's there's no way they push through, right? Okay, let's just get him. Naval invade. Go to East Anglia. There's no way he goes all the way around. War in the mud, the entrenched front. 4,000 progress on technology on depth of defense. All right, nice. Apparently, we're just defending over here. <laughs> Look at that defense. The French are defending over there. Not my favorite thing to see. 
In fact, I reckon. What's his average? Yeah, we could we could take him. Advance, my friend. And I think I'm gonna get the trench rat to advance as well. Here we go. Ten days and we try to invade the home counties of India. There's a battle in the North Sea. Damn it, they've got a lot more ships. This was to be expected. But by God, are we killing a lot of them? Okay. That's unfortunate. Alright, we'll try again soon. Oh my god, the desert rat's pushing out. The trench rat or the desert rat. The Ching are in absolute shambles. How are... Oh, that's not good. We might have to send some troops. All right, Bertie, go and advance on the Prussians. Show them how the Indians fight. Ironclads are expensive, but I think our military uh, complex is holding up nicely. We don't seem to be... It's hardwood that's expensive. Um, oh my God. How many men have we killed? We've actually lost more than we've uh, killed. Let's have a look. We've lost, well, to be fair, we've only lost 14,000. We've killed a lot of them. Oh my God, we've killed 320,000, Ching. All right, we arrived over here, yeah. Benjamin, five days. He's an expert offense, expert defense. All right, I want to see what he can do in one battle. Oh, okay, he's actually suffering so much attrition. Um, yeah, let's not do that. We are stomping over here. All right, 25 days and Benjamin's going back into the British Isles. Reporting clippers at the same time as fighting them. Yeah, somehow I don't think they're going to be doing that. I love how this guy, he's got 55. 55 versus 500, outnumbered 10 to 1. And he's advancing, marching forwards, destroying them all. <gasps> oh, Benjamin, Benjamin push. Let's go, Benjamin. Benjamin, he landed, let's go. Oh my God, Benjamin, you absolute legend. How has he done this? He's pushing him out. Oh my God, he's, like, he's doing single fronts at a time. They're just so slow to respond. 36 days. Hi, attrition. I know, Benjamin, but you got to keep going, buddy. He's got 60 defense. Let's go, Benjamin. He has such low things because of his attrition. 75% attrition. But, Benjamin, you got to hold. Buddy, buddy, you got to hold. They're just defending. All right, you got to defend the home front as well. Defend. Don't get involved in a battle, buddy. Your morale is way too low. 135 defense. It's literally the best in the world, but his morale is too low. We just got to keep stalling him, boy. If we hold London, we should be fine. 25% attrition. Yeah, we need you to escort convoys. There you go. That's, I figured it out. That should stop that much attrition. Because he's far away from home. <laughs> Over here in Liverpool, the mighty battle of Liverpool. You have the Ching versus the Russians. Oh my god. I need the Russians to get out of here, man. Ching's gone. Alright, I'm going to fully dedicate myself to this front. I'm not even suffering attrition because our guys are escorting them. So it's lovely. Just need the Russians to not be here. They think they're helping. They're really not. My boys are great. With the Russians being here, they kind of suck. The Russians couldn't push through a wet paper bag. Oh, it's going to happen though. I want to see how many men we've killed before this. We've got 1.2 million dead. But to be fair, they didn't, they didn't count the Qing. We've only lost 45,000 men. We've killed almost a million. If you combine wounded in that. There we go. The East India Company has conquered. Oh my God. We've conquered London. That's actually shot our GDP to number one. Handily. And the British is sub one mil. All right, what's your infrastructure? Okay, I'm gonna need to start building railways here. We've got Big Ben, boys. Welcome to a much bigger market. I should be able to make you all profitable. All uh, right, let's, before we do anything else, sort out these railways. Because if you're all profitable, then you'll actually start to like me. Oh, that's amazing. So we've got to conquer another three provinces and we can form Britain, well, England. Oil shortages. Where do we use oil? Who produces oil? New South Wales and Britain. France. Where the hell do you get oil from? Whaling. I don't have anywhere to use whaling. What do we use oil for? Ah, everywhere's in turmoil. Why? Why? Why is it going up? I feel like we should probably go multiculturalism. <laughs> Meanwhile, Britain seems to have all sorts of uh, issues. A couple more railways here. All right, so why are you in turmoil? It doesn't tell you why. Loads of radicals. Is it because I annexed England? Yeah, we are notorious. Plus 50% radicals from conquest. Now I'll do it. I feel like it doesn't make sense though. Production. Okay, so that's where oil's produced. We need Scotland. Assumption. The potentials for oil are over here. Can support 12 oil rigs. The Trucial states. I should probably switch back over to this sort of production side of things. Electric sewing machines would be good. We need more clothes. What's our market like? Yeah, we're lacking coal, tools, iron, steel. Or wood at least. Well, shop rising. Oh, I should help. Wait, what? Wales is a thing? Oh, and because it's a revolutionary state, they, they defended against the English. Oh my god. Dude, revolutionary Great Britain. Britain is collapsing. To be fair, they probably would if like the, the industrial hubs of um, of England were just taken by the Indians. With the number one great power, unsurprisingly, the GDP of France collapsed. The GDP of France, what? Oh, the proletariat result, revolt. I think I've seen this one before. 
What do we even use? Oh, we're using oil for food industries. Oh my god, Revolution Bro Great Britain is actually going to do it. Um, we are going to go for a laissez-faire economic system instead of agrarianism. And oh dear, Jack the Ripper. That's going to piss off a lot of people. We've got 55 million radicals. What more could I do to help you? I don't understand you people. Fine, I'll preserve agrarianism, bro. Just chill. Because that's not going to radicalize anyone, so we're going to go interventionism. I want laissez-faire because it gives me a larger construction pool, like investment pool. Makes construction cheaper because right now we're halfway to bankruptcy. Um, sure. The Welsh Uprising won. We go electric sewing machines. i do it. Uh, we probably do need to have more electricity. How bad is the shortage? It's pretty bad. I want to start electrifying everything, so let's go ahead and build a ton of these things. Your eyes do not deceive you. That is me making money whilst having 900 construction. India is insane. My people are rich enough to pay for the construction of things. Do I have steel mills coming up? I need them. Coal mines, yeah. Also, this is the max amount. Oh my god, I'm making so much money. Uh, and then steam mills will come later, which we need. Because whilst our GDP is growing rapidly, we do have shortage of things like steel. Which is kind of necessary for our army. It's actually limiting us quite a bit. The number two producer worldwide. Oh, and there's a communist uprising in uh, Austria. And this uh, British war has been going on for so long. Communist Britain. Shame they don't have a special flag. Hey, finally the Ripper's dead. Jesus Christ. Automatic irrigation has been unlocked. That will help things. I'm trying to employ more capitalists because then they can help uh, fund things. At least that's how I think it works. Can open half the process over here and some of that stuff. Hmm, we don't actually have a way to make sugar. Jingdu though. Oh, what are we lacking in? Clothes. Lots of clothes. Clothes, furniture, tools are a big one. Yeah, loads of tools and coal and steel. Right, let's keep going with the steel then. And then some tools. Textile mills. Furniture. And the insane thing is, if I go over here and go to like the back page, it'll be done in two years, all of this stuff. So here's the thing. I can't actually uh, fight Britain until Britain finishes this. So I'm going to go ahead and capitulate to the communists. Um, they're also both locked in. They're not doing anything. And so this war would just go on forever. It physically cannot end. So we're going to capitulate and then switch back over to our country. Oh, it's nothing gives me more pleasure than seeing cheap military goods. And celebrate, let's declare war on Britain. I'm curious, how good is your navy nowadays? Because mine is uh, is still the same. Um, yeah, okay, it's it's kind of trash, bro. Still, I'm going to send everyone to escort convoys, make sure that we don't have any issues on that front. 53 flotillas in reserve. Oh, the England HQ. Uh, you, alcoholic man. Barnaby Wentworth. You're fearful. Of course you are. Conquer Yorkshire. Let's conquer Lancashire. Not in that order. And let's see, does anyone get involved? I reckon the Ching will. They're probably pissed off at me for constantly nicking their stuff. Wait, what? Uh oh, we don't have any Man of Wars. Ooh, that's bad. Ah, that's bad. I did not realize that you weren't updated to the modern tech. I need you having monitors. Oof, that's gonna suck. Not a good thing to do just before a war. Finally, went worth. Just, how do I just tell you to chill, bro? You're gonna lose a lot of men. Um, Benjamin Bertie, this insane man. Oh, he's got an ally. Who is it? Austria coming back in for round two. Okay. And the Spanish. God damn. What? Oh, they just gave it to me. Oh, they're disappointing. You, you're all struggling. Okay, well. One second. Oh, you got sulfur mines here. Okay, just bump up your railways. Head to the back. Q and bump you lot up. It's actually a shame because I'd have much rather have fought them and took it all in one war. French GDP is tanked once more. I don't know what the hell happened after that. Like, you can see here where they had their revolution and then they just never recovered. The Austrians have been pretty stable. The Qing, pretty stable. The Russians, the English, just... Yeah. Let's do a, let's do a, a Moroccan GDP check. 3.54. What's Tunisia at? 9.16! Tunisian superiority! Let's go! I wish we had to break truces in this game. Four more years of truce. We can declare 20 interests. Okay, let's just... Uh, declare it over here. They've usually got some interesting resources over here. I need some rubber, so that's probably a good one. Uh, they might have rubber over here as well. And over here, and over here. Can I just declare the world an interest? I'm just going to declare Africa. Seems like a pretty good interest to me. Uh, new world. The Caribbean. Just that just looks pretty. Um, Japan's a bit of a mistake because usually. Wait, are you isolationist? You look pretty isolationist, mate. Oh, uh, yes. Okay, so there's no point in declaring interest over there. This will just give me access to a much larger market. We're going to export a bunch of stuff to the Qing. Inevitably, they'll want to fight me in a war, which will lead to uh, economic collapse on both ends. I kind of don't need more people, 
So, healthcare, not my biggest concern. I'm going to do it anyway. Do you know how much? Sure, let's pay for it. That's costing a lot of money. That costs 80000 for that one paper. I've written papers before. Well, can I have 80000 Oh my god, there's an Afro-American uprising. Benjamin, I have a task for you, bud. <laughs> Go save the African-Americans. Where's your capital? It's this one. Okay, I've got I to gotta save him. Bertie, you're up. Need you to escort convoys over here, lads. You're cocky, huh? Okay, let's see how long that lasts. Come on, buddy. You can survive. 111 defense. Jesus. All right. Man of wars are expensive. They shouldn't be. I don't think I changed it again. I don't want to change it from here. Let's change the individuals. Um, it's the Midlands, isn't it? It's the issue. Yeah. Naval base. Monitors. And then the barracks need to be switched over to trench. Siege. Hutterized. Re reconnaissance. Okay. Um, this is a bit beyond me. Okay, the African Americans are holding off. Go on, Bertie. Go on, Bertie. Oh, look at that. We don't even have any attrition because we're using our navy to support. Wonderful. And there we go. All right, lads. How are we doing? I'm tempted to offer you a defensive pact. Our relations aren't even cordial. All right. I don't see how that is considering I've just, well, I'm on a debt of a million. Um, they wouldn't even accept it. Why? You're cautious towards us. Bro, I just saved your life. What do you mean? See how wacky my graph is because I occasionally just pause my uh, <laughs> expenses, which is about a mil. <laughs> about 600,000. So I can build up my economy and then just tank it again. Not tank it, but, you know, focus on growth. That living is now 13. Maybe up to 15 for the ethical thing. I don't think we're going to be able to get that considering literally no one. Well, I'd say no one. I'll be about plus 15. Tuna says 60, 17.3. Good job, boys. Proud of you. Looking at Wales, everything's unemployed. Everything's making a loss. They try to get me to help out. Yeah, I'm not doing that. Come on. December this year. Weekly GDP goes up by 13 million. That's always nice. I'll be honest, I think I've been underestimating how useful universities are. Because I pumped a couple in. I've genuinely never built a university until this moment. Um, I pumped a couple in and my technology just sort of exploded. Now we're researching chemical warfare. Could get machine gunners. Plus 25 defense. We don't really need defense. It's just more offense. You wouldn't accept a, a defensive pact with the number one power in the world. Are you... Are you kidding me? We've literally never lost a war. I think the AI is too reluctant to accept things, to be honest. What the hell is this about? You're trying to cut America down to size. All states and subjects they've gained in conquest in the last 10 years. Almost certain they'll back down. Go and do it. The Russians are helping. The Spanish are helping. They're actually fighting it. That's really funny. Because that means they probably won't get involved in my war. Right, let's build up some more reserves. No way you could actually reach them. I've never seen the AI do a naval invasion. All right. Conquer you. Hey, with the word Indian in it, I'm going to conquer. Spanish apparently supporting you. Sure. Uh, I want to see Andalusia become free. And we'll take uh, a Spanish treaty port in uh, Catalonia. Make sure we're escorting some convoys. Are you England HQ? No China, South India, North India. I need... Uh, I actually haven't mobilized these guys. Though. Mobilize them. Um, I need one from England. I'm going to get them to naval invade. England HQ. Offensive planner. Sounds good. Frederick Eaton. That's the most French man we have. <laughs> what? Why? All right, Freddy. All right, Benjamin Bertie's going to lead the, the charge as always. Oh, the Ching. Of course. Wouldn't be uh, wouldn't be proper for you to not get involved, would it? Meddling bastards. God, France. Really trying to evade the US there. Oh my God, they're actually going to fight us. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, excellent. All right. Two arms, my friend. And now, Frederick Eaton, led by Barnaby Wentworth. You're going to naval invade uh, Western Andalusia. Okay, yeah, that was very confusing for a second. The numbers didn't make sense. 203 defense! Uh, it doesn't appear my troops have gotten here in time. Or at least they've only got one in the battle for some reason. No men were killed, but we're going to be forced out of this province. Yeah, that sucks. There we go. That's what we want to see. Look at that naval battle. He actually has ironclads as well, but they're not as good as ours. All right, so it was, who was it that was defending? I'm going to need you up here. All right, the naval invasion is a go. And once we land... I need to escort convoys. He's already assigned to it. Wonderful. Push the front. Take him out to Gibraltar. Excellent. And all of his troops are in are in England. All right, so man's just got to hold off for a little bit whilst we push through the entirety of Spain, basically unopposed. How goes the eastern front? Uh, it appears we're stalled. All right, well, you are the sort of defending on your own. I think I sent the wrong guy. It's just Terence Cobham. It's 29 divisions defending. Okay, well, yeah, defend... Literally... <laughs> Our entire uh, homelands are defended by these 29 dudes. <laughs> Dude, I, don't, I can't be fighting Russia right now. I'm already fighting everyone else. What are the Ching doing here? Yeah, buddy, you really should have brought Ben back to defend this. And we are sort of getting our asses kicked up north. That's fine. 
It's this eastern front here that I'm, well, we've got 122 defense, so I'm not like terrified of it. I'm just a bit nervous about it because if I'm not looking and we suddenly get taken out, uh, that's not good either. How many men have we killed? We've only lost, we've lost 40,000 and we've killed about 600,000 in total. Nice. Gwalori Peasant Revolt. I'm sure that my boys can deal with that. We've got chemical weapons. Lovely. Uh oh, uh, we're going to need to send some boys home. Mm, yeah, because they're going to start nipping through. Uh, after this battle, where the Ching are getting destroyed. The Ching are everywhere. I need to send this guy home. Benjamin Bertie needs to needs to go elsewhere. God, the walls just exploded the violence. Come on. Okay, Benjamin Bertie, stand by. Defend the front. All oh, right, all of our trade with the Ching will have collapsed. So we need to take Madrid. Should be able to do that pretty soon. God, our troops are amazing. Look at that. So yeah, standard formation whilst our siege artillery just blows you out of the sky. Thank you very much. Very kind of you. Mate, Terence Cobham's done bits here. I mean, his troops will probably fall, but god damn, are they murdering them like three, four to one. All right, that's the Spanish dealt with. I will say this game's taught me a lot now. This like this specific India game about war. I'm starting to get the grasp of it a bit more. Play more of a global power. All right, let's keep pushing upwards. British should surrender soon. All right, Benjamin, time for you to advance into the Qing. Benjamin Bertie's just a bit of a beast. Look how many men he's killed. Jesus Christ. That's a mull genocide. Oh, Jesus. And he instantly counterattacks. All right, we've, we've conquered Yorkshire. Wonderful. We just need to take out the Qing. We could just propose a white piece, but not exactly my style. It's time we take the fight to Beijing. 46 days and Benjamin Bertie launches himself into the fray. Yeah, somehow I'm not really threatened by that. But Frederick, if, uh, in fact, let's get that moral cowl. Just go in and deal with that, please. Thank you. What the hell is this? Strike? Sure. Well, the conflict, I have to do what? I don't know, I have to figure something out. Destroy that. Good job. Damn, a lot of people die in naval battles. All right, here we go. Nipping. Benjamin Bertie. He's in Beijing and there's not enough troops to stop him. Look at the rats scramble. Wage controls or regulatory bodies? Yeah, I can do regulatory bodies. Doesn't matter what the game thinks is going to happen. Benjamin Bertie's on it. I still believe. I still believe Benjamin Bertie. She's killed 20, 30,000 men. Oh my god, he's actually going to do it. Always believe in Benjamin Bertie. Straight back in there, son. And there we have it. We get Andalusia liberated. We've got Catalonian Treaty Port. We've conquered Yorkshire, Lancashire, and the Indian Ocean Territory, wherever that is. Now we could finally fulfill the Indian destiny of forming England. <laughs> That's right, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> we have formed England. <laughs> oh, this game is so dumb sometimes. <laughs> oh, it's funny. Yeah, that's it. That's how India has just fully conquered the entirety of England. And I haven't even, like, fully cored these things either. I think it should give you cores. But yeah. That was, uh, that was actually a lot of fun. Uh, I learned so much about war in that game. Uh, it's also really stupid how war is. But I think I learned a lot about specifically the, the naval side of things, which I've never even touched before, um, which is great. And also universities. It's, um, <laughs> it's, it's an interesting one, that. Um, I, also, I also think that as India, you're really not able to fall to a revolution because you saw what happened. I just sort of exploded into 15 different fronts and I was absolutely fine. It's probably one of my longest ever recordings just because uh, the meticulous nature of it. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed that that lathe movie. <laughs> Otherwise, lads, please do make sure to like and subscribe. It really does help me out. Put any other suggestions for games and uh, sort of t things you want me to play. Obviously, I formed the Soviet Union. I formed communist stuff. Yeah, there's also little different government types in the game I'd like to explore. So if that's of interest, please put it in the comments down below and I'll be sure to get right on it. Otherwise, lads, I think I've said that twice. Please do make sure to like, like and subscribe and I'll see you all next time. Goodbye. Huge shout out to our patrons, most notably Charlie Demorel, Krilly, Flyerton, JDow52, Cargon, Xiaomi, Lewis Wright, Nicole's Christ, QA Shard, Redguard, and Shadow Singer. Your support means a lot, guys. Whilst you're here, you might as well click on another video. I mean, it's, it's literally right there.